What the? Oh my god, Mr. Alien, I didn't tell you you can make videos. Get out of here. Oh, hello everybody. I'm Matt Video Productions and welcome back to another video. First of all, let's acknowledge this setup difference. Some things have been going on in my room that I'll explain in a second, but yes, it is different and it's going to be different for a little bit until I figure out what I am going to do and craft a whole new setup. Anyways, welcome viewers to a video about Dream Booth AI. If you don't know what Dream Booth is, essentially we can take Stable Diffusion, which is the popular text image AI, and use Google's Dream Booth software and apply it to Stable Diffusion. Essentially, I can take photos with my phone, for example, or a camera of myself, my dog, any object, and train a Stable Diffusion Dream Booth model on those images. So using myself as an example, I could say photo of Matt Vid Pro drinking a gallon of lemon juice or photo of Matt VidPro skydiving off of the Eiffel Tower, and it will produce stable diffusion results that are equate to that image. And it's really quite impressive and powerful, and I wanted to cover this topic for a long time on the channel, and I'm finally getting around to it, so we're doing a full guide here. I did some snooping, I did some looking around, and I found some really cool stuff for you guys to be able to use and produce Dream Booth results very easily yourself at home without any of that coding craziness that you might see. And I'm going to be using Dream Booth today to explain to you why my setup is different. So here are some Dream Booth examples of a model that I have trained on myself. As you can see, they came out really nice. Like most things with text to image AI, it all depends on the prompt. So this was a very good default prompt. This is basically me as like a beautiful pilot person with a red scarf. I posted this one on the community tab of my YouTube channel. It came out really, really well, but all of them honestly came out really well. We've got the red scarf. It definitely looks like me. What do you guys think? Does it, you know, match up? It, it looks like me to, to a very good degree. You'll see the images that I trained this thing on in a little bit here, but we've got me with like really long hair, for example, here and the starry sky in the background. This one's a little warped, but in general, they came out really, really well. Okay, so now I'm going to tell you the story of why the camera setup is different today. Photo of SKS Man, which in this case is me. I'll explain why it's SKS Man instead of Matt VidPro or something like that in a little bit. Photo of SKS Man smelling something gross after walking into his room. I, I was smelling something gross in my room, folks. Okay, I didn't know where it was coming from. It was nasty. I was upset about it. But you can see the Dream Booth results of that. I mean, that is pretty much exactly what I look like right there. I was like, oh, oh, it smells so bad. And you can see I'm, you know, holding my nose up here with this photo, for example, and all these, I just look like I'm about to, to straight up vom there. These are very, very good results, though. I like this one as well. But yeah, this is me smelling something gross after walking to my room. Okay, so this next one is photo of SKS Man or Matt VidPro smelling the mini fridge in his room. It smells disgusting. Yeah, I don't know if you guys have seen in the background of some of my videos, I have a mini fridge or I had one. And man, that thing, that thing smelled disgusting. And as you can see, these are supposedly images of me smelling a disgusting mini fridge. These ones didn't come out as great. This one doesn't even have me in it. There's just like paint buckets lying around. All right, this is the next photo of me looking at mold under my mini fridge. Yes, there was mold growing under my mini fridge because there was condensation building up behind it. There, was, there wasn't anything I left in there, okay? I wasn't being gross. It was just the mini fridge getting old and creating condensation and creating mold under the mini fridge. But as you can see, I do not look too happy. That's pretty much the, exactly the face that I made when I discovered this. This one's so good. I'm like, oh, oh God, it's so bad. All right. And then this one, I've added my own little creative spin here. Photo of Matt VidPro throwing his mini fridge off a cliff at the Grand Canyon. If I could do this, this is exactly what I would have done. But... Yeah, you can see it sort of works. It sort of looks like I'm jumping. I don't know. This doesn't really look much like me, but it, it does look like I'm jumping off of the Grand Canyon here. I guess if you could interpret these as looking like me and I'm just hurling myself off, which is probably what I would do if I had to smell that smell anymore. But yeah, you can see the mini fridge as well. Yeah, I threw the mini fridge away because it was it was ruined. And finally, a little present for you guys. Here is a photo of me supposedly eating a lemon. So yeah, this is this is what I look like when I do eat lemons. I'm very happy, excited. I look like a crazy person ready to devour some lemons. As you can see, here is the model that I tuned. I named it Mad Vid Pro. And here are some of the initial photos, by the way, guys, that I took to train 
the dream booth model on so this is all these random photos i just took them all on my phone these are a lot of close-ups and then i tried to do some medium shots and then i did a bunch of them of me standing around in my sister's room here which you know you can obviously see the influence in a lot of these generated photos i look like i'm in that room and the lighting and everything looks like i took it on my phone like close up and it's also in my room so that's why you know I could have trained this model a little bit better, but, you know, they, they still came out really decent, especially with really complex prompts like this, for example. So let's get into how Astria, this website, works. This isn't the only way of using Dream Booth I'm going to discuss in this video, but it's the main one I want to talk about. So here is a little handbook guide here. You want to upload 10 to 20 photos of your subject. This could be an object, for example. It could be yourself, which is what I expect most people to do, or your dog. Three photos of full body or an, the entire object. Five medium shot photos. This would be like waist up photos. Ten close ups. This would just be like only your head, for example. Like this, what we're seeing right now of my webcam is a close up. Variation is key. Change body poses for every picture. Variety of expressions and emotions. Subject eyes looking in different directions. And I would also add to this that you're going to want to move around in some different locations. Don't take all of them in the same location where you're going to end up with the same background in a lot of your photos. So definitely change up and move around your location. Whatever your capture will be overrepresented. So things you don't want to get associated with your subject should change in every shot. Okay, yeah, they did talk about pick a new background. I didn't read this carefully enough when I did it. So this apparently was super important. That's why I did SKS Man and not Matt VidPro as the tag class name. You gotta have to pick a good one, something really broad. Person usually works best if you're, you know, a human or you could do woman or man, for example. When constructing your prompts, always include SKS class name to represent the subject. So when you actually are done training the model, you want to type in SKS and then whatever you did your class name as. So if your dog was the subject, for example, you'd want to do SKS dog. And, you know, we've also got some examples on the website of like a car. So there are some other different types of examples you could do. And of course, this website's going to be linked down below for you guys. And this website is also linked on my website. If you go to my website and scroll down and click on AI links here, you'll be taken to this AI master list where I have every link from every video I've ever made and more. You can find a bunch of dream booth stuff so if we want to go ahead and fine tune a model with astria it actually does cost three dollars which i think is a really good price i'm going to talk about the pricing in this astria charges you three bucks to train a model and it is a very easy little transaction three bucks you can pay with Google Pay, so it's nice and secure. That's what I did. And it takes about 90 minutes or so, and it will automatically train your model with the image submission. We're going to go through the image submission and that process. But once your model is done training, we can go in here with the model that we've created, and we can type in whatever we want, whatever prompts we want, and it will generate them for completely free. You have unlimited generations for three bucks with your model on the Astria website, which is really nice. And they actually do have some specific settings here, like the CFG scale and, you know, how many steps and you can do seed as well. So, yeah, unlimited generations plus training the model for three bucks. I really don't think it's that bad of a deal. Not only that, you can actually download the checkpoint. So this is your trained model here. Their files are usually about two gigabytes. But all you have to do is click right here up on this checkpoint button and you can download that model. And if you, you know, figure out that you want to generate more images with that trained checkpoint that you created with Astra, you can just completely download the model for free and you can do all of the generating you want with that checkpoint file separate from Astra. So, yeah, basically the checkpoint is your model. So the model only lasts 30 days here on the Astra website but you will have it forever if you download the checkpoint and use it elsewhere. This is essentially what the process is for creating a brand new model. Basically, you just name it right up top here. Whatever you want to name it doesn't really affect the model. And then down here, we get to the class name. And this class name is, you know, what you're going to type in to generate it. So, you know, you want to just have it as person, essentially. If you're doing a person or your dog, just name it dog flat out. The more general, the better the model will typically generate images. So if you do like Matt VidPro or something really specific, you might not be getting the best results. That's why I did SKS Man. So for example, in the demo here, they just go with person. And then you want to just choose your files to upload to train 
on the model here. Very, very simple and easy. So you're going to want to upload them to your computer, although I do believe you can actually do this on your phone as well and do everything right from your phone. And that's why I really do think it's worth the $3 as well. It just makes it so easy with the whole GUI on the website, only three bucks, unlimited generations. So you select your images. And then all you have to do is press the create button and then about 90 minutes later, it did actually take about 90 minutes for me, they will generate some base images here of like these little testing images and then you'll be able to just type any prompt you want in and generate stuff. So yeah, that is Astria. I'll link that down below. This is my favorite way of using Dream Booth. I know three bucks, right? But I, I really do think it's a good deal, especially because you can download the model, generate infinite images with it for 30 days while you have the model and it's really nice and simple i do want to mention though a few other ways that you can use dream booth for completely free this costs you absolutely nothing you can actually do it through google collab but i have to say these google collabs are pretty advanced i wouldn't consider them very easy to use for new users so right here for example dream booth fine tuning for stable diffusion using diffusers this is dream booth it takes a really long time to go through this whole setup process and there's quite a lot that goes on but if you've never used the google collab before essentially what we do is start with the initial setup here so we'd click this little run button that you can see down here we'd start with this and then we have move on to this one this loads up Stable Diffusion, for example, so you have to do it piece by piece by piece in Google Collab. I'll link you guys to two different Google Collabs. And then you add the images, for example, with this one. And these have to come in the form of URLs, so you'd have to upload your images as URLs. An easy way to do that is in Discord, by the way, but still, this is a lot more complicated than just using the Astria website to do it for only three bucks. Set up and check the images, and then you want to move down to settings for newly created concept. So this would be like a prompt. Teach the model the new concept. So this is fine tuning with Dream Booth. And this can take from 15 minutes to two hours, typically around 90 minutes is what we see. And then you run the code with your newly trained model. They actually do have an interactive UI demo on Gradio, but you know, you still have to go through this whole Google Collab setup. But once you get there, it is pretty easy because you can use this little Gradio Dream Booth. But again, this Google Collab is very complicated, but I'm just going to link you to the resources to allow you to do that. I do recommend just doing it in Astria. I think it's the best way to do it, and it's a good price. There's also this Dream Booth Collab as well that uses Hugging Face, so you have to get a Hugging Face token. And, you know, they tell you how to do it all here in the Google Collab, so technically you could figure out how to do it just by only the Google Collab. But again, this is very complicated. You got to go one by one here, install the requirements, log into Hugging Face, install this Xformers pre-compiled wheel settings, and you know, eventually we'll be able to start creating images right here in the Google Collab for, again, completely free if you don't want to spend that three bucks. And finally, folks, there is actually a way to run this model completely not through Google Collab at home on your own system if you have a computer that's powerful enough. I do believe it still requires quite a lot of VRAM though to run so if you don't have a powerful gaming computer or workhorse computer with a nice gpu you might run into issues so nerdy rodent here made a fantastic tutorial that i highly recommend if you want to actually go the route of running this at your home it does require quite a bit of experience here you have to run commands and like command prompt you have to install a bunch of stuff here but he lays it out better than i've seen anyone else nerdy rodent's kind of a legend actually at these more advanced tutorials and i highly recommend his channel i'll be linking this video in the description nerdy rodent actually helped me figure out how to run stuff on my computer at home before i even started making ai videos so yeah he is really great it doesn't require any coding necessarily but it still is very, you know, complicated. You need Anaconda. You need to download repos from GitHub. If you're into coding and you know about all of this stuff, this won't be super difficult for you. But, you know, if you're a beginner, this is going to be pretty difficult. But again, this is a very, very good tutorial on this. So I will be linking it down below if you want to install it at home by yourself. Finally, folks here, I'll end on a positive note. We're getting a little bit of news for Dream Booth, actually. This is a very recent. This actually came out today at 9 in the morning. New simple Dream Booth method incoming. Train in less than 60 minutes, which is exciting, without class images on multiple subjects, hundreds if you want. So this means that, you know, you don't have to make a new model if you want to train on your dog and you at the same time. You could train on your entire family if you really wanted to, which is really exciting. I'll probably make a video on this one 
in the future if it really is that simple. And apparently this will be posted soon. So it could be posted today or it could be posted later. But yeah, this is super exciting. New Dream Booth method is coming. And Joe Penna here, who is from the original repo, was like very excited about this. So yeah, this is exciting. New Dream Booth stuff incoming. But if you want to do it today, this was your video. So yes, everyone, thank you so much for watching. I am at VidPro. I hope this video was of some use to you guys. Again, all links will be down in the description. Check out my website for that master list of all AI stuff. And also check out my Discord for the latest in AI news. That's actually how I found out about that little piece of Dream Booth news was on my Discord. So yeah, everyone, thank you so much for watching and subscribe. Check out some of my other videos. I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.